Well, hey friends, it's Tracy. Violet was out here, but she's back in the house now from Tea Time with Tracy. I just got done filming this video, spend time with you guys. And I, in between now and the end of my video, I had to stop and make room on my phone and I accidentally deleted the first part of my video. So luckily I didn't finish my tea yet. I'm on my last cup. So I'll show you again, not that it, you knew this, but my beautiful, beautiful, pretty, pretty. And the books that I accidentally deleted from my library hall. Cause I went to the library the other day. It was just spur of the moment thing. I had to pick kids up from day camp, but I had a little time to spare. And I know sometimes they have book sales there. And I was just gonna go see when the next one was. Turns out they had a whole room of books. I didn't get a chance to go through half the books I wanted to go through cause I was on a time crunch, but I did get some. So I'll show you what I got, but let me show you her first. There's still tea in her now, but look at the basket. A tisket a tasket. Yes, look at that. I'm sitting beside a rose bush, and the tea I'm having, it's the twinning brand Hush or Honey Bush Mandarin Orange or something. I'll take a picture of it after. I meant to bring it out, but. I brought everything back in and went to unload my phone. I'm like, where the heck is my clip? And it's not here. So I thought I'll come and finish it while I still have some tea in my teacup. But you can see here, she has some gold down here at the bottom and some gold up here. And the thing about her, she doesn't have any gold on the sides of her arm, but she does have some on her elbow. Isn't that pretty? And this girl has curves, you see that? She's got hips and they don't lie. Oh no. And you can see it's kind of riveted. I don't know what you'd call that. But you can see it here on the um, pedestal, her skirt too. It's not just a straight edge. It's kind of ripples. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So these come from, well, Royal Albert Bone China, England. So I'll do this, try to remember the books. I know it was the two hard covered ones. And I think that one, I think. So three of the books that I got, got deleted, but yeah, that's all right. It's still a beautiful day. It's Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. Oh, all right. Quite excited about this one. This is probably going to be the first one that I read. But, um, never read anything by this person. And slightly scandalous. I like a little scandal in my fictional world. Yes, I do. This is supposed to be placed, I think it said, the 1880s or... No, it doesn't say. Not in this one. It says in something else. Uh, but this is back, back in the day. Back in the day. Like, dukes and ladies. And I know there's dukes and ladies now, but I think this is back when... That sounds really mean. I don't... I, mean, I didn't even say it internally. I did. I'm like, when they were a real thing. And they are a real thing. They're just not around here, so I don't know how that works. But this is supposed to be back in the day, I think. I think it doesn't say so anyways this has to do with a lady named Freya she has four unruly brothers so she she grew up feisty and you know rough and tumble tomboyish because she has four older brothers and that's just the way she is but for some reason she finds herself in Bath I guess that's a place and uh, I don't know whether she's on vacation or working there or living there or what, but somebody comes into her room. The somebody is the hero of the story. Joshua Moore is his name, and he's known as a Hellraiser. Marquise of Hellmere. And he's intrigued by this beauty that makes a surprising, and he makes a surprising request. What he asks, get out of here. 
he asks if she will pose as his fiance because his family is trying to match make the heck out of him to try to settle him down. And her family's kind of doing the same thing. That's why I'm assuming she must be in Bath, maybe to get away from her crazy family because probably women are supposed to be married back in the day. People still think that now, but fun fact, I'm not married and I don't really need to be married, don't want to be married. But we've been together for almost 27 years and six beautiful children and we're lock solid there, son. Yes, we are. Anyways, I'm assuming these ladies need to be married. So he wants her to pose as his fiance so everybody will back the heck off. So that's where um, things go. I don't know. I think it's going to be a funny kind of a funny story like a playful romance contemporary I think these are probably all contemporary for the most part none of the dark stuff I've been reading now so I'm gonna use these books the books that I got at the library as cleanser books and not that they're just like willy-nilly but just to set me back to zero again when I go real dark and then I need something to bring me back up to bring me back up a bit I think I'll start with this one that was a hawk anyways that one then I got this one these are the only two hardcover ones I got at the library paperbacks were 25 cents hardcovers were 50 cents I think and I think it was something like that and then they had cassettes and DVDs and CDs and jigsaw puzzles and kids books you know what I mean like crazy crazy like I could have drove there with the truck and took them all there's Randall he's sitting right there right there like I could throw a rock at him I wouldn't because he's my friend but if those that don't know Randall's a crow and don't know who Randall is Randall Flagg and if you don't know who Randall Flagg is you don't know Stephen King so there anyways Joanna Lindsay one heart to win and this is like a Western one. I think this is the one that said it was supposed to be back in the 1880s. Yes, Montana Territory. Ranch land of the 1880s. It's a 50-year feud between these two families. The Warrens and the Callahans. So, they're trying to arrange a marriage to end this feud. So, the lady is Tiffany. And... The man is Hunter. Tiffany and Hunter. So Tiffany is sent via train, I'm assuming. I don't know. Maybe horse? No, train. Train. To wherever Hunter's family is because she's, go she's betrothed to him. And she's going to meet this person. She doesn't want to do this at all, but she has no choice. So... While she was on this train, she meets a young lady who was scheduled to go to the same place, only to be a housemaid. So, she convinces this young woman to switch places with her. So she can go and pretend to be the betrothed, and Tiffany can go and be the maid, so she can get to know her husband, her fiancé. The thing is, as soon as Tiffany, posing as the maid, gets off the train, she's abducted and is taken. taken. Uh, that's that's the way I read it, yeah. But they think they're just taking her the the housekeeper, not the actual person. And Hunter, the canoodler, he's trying to get all over Tiffany, who he believes is the housekeeper. He doesn't know that's the betrothed. So she's thrown off by this, like, well, he was going to cheat on me. He, he was easily, he knows he's bet supposedly betrothed to me. And he's okay with cheating with the house, house wife, uh, the housekeeper. And it goes from there. I don't know. It could be a romantic comedy. It could be drama. But I think that would be good. I think, I mean, a good, interesting, easy to read. And I like the, the looks of it. I think I could breeze through this. And I think it would be a 
probably a happily ever after. I think this would be a happily ever after. A lot of the dark romances ones that I read, somebody asked, I'm like, do you ever read ones with happily ever afters? A lot of them do have twisted happily ever afters. Some of them do, some of them don't, but they're happy in the character's eyes, even though they're twisted in everybody else's eyes. So it's a matter of perspective. I think these would be your stereotypical ha happily ever afters, but I don't know. Listen to those. Listen to those. Loud, loud. And then the last one, because I think these ones I did in part two, like the part that I didn't delete, is Maya Banks. And I think I've read something from her before. I can't recall. I can't recall. But that name seems familiar. And I don't know if this is um, like paranormal or not. Apparently, well, the, the man's name in this is Caleb. And her name is Raimi. And Caleb's younger sister is kidnapped. And nobody can seem to find her. Um, I just read the backs of these books. Like, I didn't look them up. I don't know. I don't know. I just read the backs. So this is just my take on it. His little sister is kidnapped. Nobody can find her. Except Raimi apparently has some sort of gift. Doesn't say what. I'm assuming it's some sort of a psychic psychic gift or maybe it's a supernatural gift or something I don't know but whenever she uses her gift a piece of her she loses a piece of herself I don't know whether she dies a little bit or she's depleting her life energy or I don't know but she ends up using a lot of her energy to find Caleb's sister I'm assuming but all of a sudden Raimi vanishes and when she steps back on the scene, because Caleb thinks she vanished forever, then she reappears. She's in trouble and she needs his help. Now Caleb will risk everything to protect her, including his heart. So, yeah. Yeah. This is more of a... I don't know if it's paranormal or sci-fi or what it is. But it's not a, it's not a great big book. And I could easily read this and, well, yeah, 295 pages, more than I thought. But, yeah, keep me safe. And 25 cents. I paid uh, 4 50 I think, for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No. 1, 4, 6 books. 4 50 Two of them hardcover. So, yeah. All right. So... I'm going to end this and just pretend it all flows together. Okay, guys? I I swear. And Violet was out here at the beginning. She is in the other part. Just for some reason, I deleted it because I'm a doorknob. But, all right. Cheers. All right. I made some room. So, this one. Taking a Shot by J.C. Burton. Never read anything. I hear my husband in the house sneezing. Anyways, this is about a girl named Jenna. And she runs a sports bar. She has brothers that are professional hockey players. or Being athletic superstar, she's stuck running the family sports bar, whether she likes it or not. Then in walks this hockey pro. All right, all right. His name's Tyler. Hockey stud. Tyler Anderson. And as much as Jenna would like to go to the boards with him, she vowed to never fall for a jock, even one as hot as Ty. So, yeah, that's the two people. I guess it's, she's tired of running this bar or something. And there's a lot of chemistry and passion between these two. And he's encouraging her to reach for her dreams. With, a cur with his encouragement... Jenna starts to believe it too. Jenna should start living for herself. So, yes, I guess she's sworn off athletes, but this stud of a man comes in and she's torn. She's torn. So, yeah, it could be an interesting read. It could be just a whole lot of fluff, but that's okay too. I like some fluff in my life. But, yeah. I had a sexy picture and a hockey skate on the front. I couldn't not get it. I'm Canadian, right? So, 
there you go. I have a couple more here. Well, I got this one, and I realized it's probably a young adult, like, not so much as a grown person like myself. But I think this might be more... I, I'm thinking it's high school kids, but it's like supernatural or paranormal. It's about fallen angels. And Nora and Patch, is this name, are forced together as lab partners. Nora would rather fall to her death than put up with his elusive answers and her questions. His teasing and his infuriatingly handsome and hypnotizing eyes. So it's not a kid's book, but it's not like a grown person's book. Like, older person? like myself you know what I'm saying but I think I'm gonna give it a try like I read those Twilight books years ago years ago and I really enjoyed them those are pretty vanilla and I really enjoyed them so I might I might really enjoy this hush hush but apparently somebody is trying to kill her and she can't decide whether it's patch because he's annoyingly handsome teases her but then there's a lot of passion and chemistry is what I get from the the back of it like the gist of it so she's not sure if he's there to kill her or is he trying to help her. So, um, unknown world of fallen angels. But it might be a good read. Like, I'm sure it is. This looks familiar to me. I've never read. This is from Becca Fitzpatrick. I don't know. I don't know. But I like fallen angel things. I like supernatural, paranormal books, romances. I have a whole slew of them up in my attic. Okay, last but not least, I got one of these. And it has one of these. Ooh, sexy. So this one is about a dig in Columbia. Because there's a cache of priceless em emeralds. And it's unearthed. Setting off a firestorm of greed, sabotage, and murder, it says. So into the jungles, this cat Caitlin goes and she arrives and finds a father she had never known before. And then um, there's unseen perils and hidden treasures in this world. This kind of book doesn't have like a whole write up about kind of what it's about. But then it says a promise of passion, which that's what it's called. Promise of love is what it's called. But in the arms of a fellow archeologist, Drake Stone, that sounds like a romance person for sure, Drake Stone. Uh, she discovers the most seductive danger of all. A man... I'm sorry, there goes the dump truck back up the hill. It goes up a lot faster than going down. Drake, um... A man of dangerous secrets and irresistible temptation. Drake draws Caitlin deeper into the savage heart of a desire from which there is no turning back. So, yeah. Oh! Drake. Yeah. I might run through the jungle with somebody like that. Sure. Why not? But it even has, like, it's older. This was last taken out. Oh, it's there's not a thing in it. Yeah, not a thing in it. I wonder when this was even made. I don't know. Or released. I don't know. But that's my last one I got. But there was a whole bunch there. And I really, if I had more time, I would have come back with a laundry basket full. But I got some ones, I think, I say this now, but I don't know. I'll probably start with one of the, honestly, I'll probably start with this one first. I like the color of it, and it sounds like it'd be kind of funny, like a funny read. And, yeah. Violet hasn't been paying no mind to us at all. She's just on the lookout. She's like a guard dog. Don't be fooled by her pretty looks. I'm telling you. She's small but mighty. She really is a hell hound in disguise. Violet. Anyways, guys, I'm going to end this now. I still got a little tea in my teapot, but I will drink it. But thanks. Violet, come here a second so they can see you. At least for a second. Oh, you're all full of stuff. Hope you don't get a wood tick, but you did have one of those things. You got stuff all in your hair, for goodness sakes. They're little seeds of, they're seeds. 
that's what they are. Well, I'll have to brush them out. You know how much I love that. Anyways, come here. Come here. Come here. We want to say peace, love, and happiness today and every single day. Please like, share, and subscribe if you so choose. But if not, that's okay too. We still love you. We still want all the happiness in the world for each and every one of you out there. We certainly do. We really, really honest and truly do. Yes, we do. Don't we, Violet? She's still on guard. On guard for the... She's Canadian. Oh, gosh. Anyways, with that, I guess we're going to say have a good night or have a good morning. And we will maybe see you tomorrow. Bye. Boink. Nope. Bloop. Thank you.